Okay, so I'm here today with one of my former clients, Michelle Varon, and I wanted to interview her because um, I love doing success stories. The reason I love doing success stories is because I remember from when I was sick, it was really, really hard to keep motivated and keep positive and think that there will be an end to this. And one of the things that got me through it was listening to other people's success stories. So I love to pay it forward and get other people's success stories out there into the ether. So people know that there are so many different options for getting better. So Michelle, tell us about, first of all, like what was going on with you and for how long? Okay, um, so 15 years ago, had a chronic stress year. Um, I'm going to weave in my story things that I understand now that I didn't understand then. So that would be that that year was significant to what has happened to me in the last 15 years. Um, before that, I definitely had adverse childhood experiences, um, had a stressful childhood, um, and then had a year of high, high stress, unending amounts of stress, and which culminated in moving. And part of the reason it was stressful is moving from Texas to California um, and ended up in California. And um, my sister is a licensed naturopathic doctor in Utah, and she was visiting in California right after the move. And I was exhausted. I, nothing was functioning in my body. My, my health had tanked. I had never experienced this. And so she ran some labs and came back and she's like, you don't, your adrenals are gone. Your adrenals are shot. Your cortisol shot. Your thyroid's messed up. Your, it was everything. Um, and the symptoms were really scary for me. And I also started to have panic attacks for the first time. And the list went on and on. I can remember going to an MD at the time, um, just wanting to get some scans and information. Um, sorry, Angela, I'm on an interview. I'll, I'll talk to you. Okay, thanks. Sorry, Angela, do you want me to start over? No, keep going. Oh, okay, cool. You can edit that. <laughs> no, sorry. we're not editing. We're just... <laughs> Is um, my, I'm, it's beautiful Hawaii and my friend just walked up in my yard. And so, <laughs> um, so I went to the doctor with this list um, that was a mile long because I just wanted her to give me a scan to tell me I wasn't dying. I was convinced I was dying. And I, I don't even know what kind of scan, test, lab work I wanted, but um, just run every lab and tell me I'm not dying because my anxiety was so high. And um, I went in and of course, immediately she's like, you need antidepressants, but that's it. And that was all she did. Um, I think a pap smear and antidepressants. <laughs> and then um, at the same time, I became um, sensitive to gluten. Definitely got better when I cut it out. Um, and then just spent the next five years after that um, kind of crawling out of a hole, taking thyroid medications, um, never got on antidepressants, definitely went the naturopathic route, followed what my sister had um, prescribed and helped me with, and she helped so much. Um, and I am positive I stayed out of a deep, deep, dark hole because of her support and just doing supportive therapies and staying on top of some things. Um, but I can remember doing a yoga class and just crying at the end because everything felt so bad. And so long story, long, long story short, over the next, those five years, I started to become sensitive to every food. And so within five years, I, um, I went to, to Mexico a couple of times in one year and got so sick in Mexico. Um, and I think that's where the gut infection started. Doesn't matter. 
but I believe that's where things really started to change even more. Um, I felt like rice produced the same symptoms of, as gluten, so did corn and blah, 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 all those things. Um, and so my understanding at the time was that if you just cut all those foods out, that everything will heal and you can reintroduce them. And um, I mean, that was, and I, I online, that's how I found the autoimmune paleo group. And that was over 10 years ago. And that whole movement was just starting. And so I got really involved in that. Um, started to really read the different things that they published, published and the things that they um, prescribed. Um, because I was working with a licensed naturopath, um, who also my sister, obviously she was like, I, you don't have symptoms of autoimmunity, but I felt that I did. And I never got tested for autoimmunity. Um, but I had many things happening to me that fit perfectly with it. When I cut all those foods out, I immediately dropped tons of weight and everything started to feel better. And so, um, I think that I was started to manage either some precursors to autoimmunity. I know I did. I had all of that path. I was headed in that direction, nipped it in the bud with diet and supplements and support and kept going, but never got better. And then starts all these gut infections. And I mean, I H pylori never showed up for me until, I mean, so this is a 15 year process probably year 10, 11 or something is when H. pylori came in. SIBO came up, all my SIBO symptoms started about two years into the autoimmune paleo diet. I um, didn't have those symptoms before. Um, possibly doing such a, a, a limited extreme diet um, led to the depletion of all of the good micro microbes in my gut. And so I became super vulnerable to any kind of infections. Um, that's, that's what I believe. I, you, who knows about all of this? Um, anyway, then I started the whole SIBO pursuing that years and years of that, um, believe that I, I did get my numbers way down. I was feeling much better, but I couldn't quite complete it. So I flew to England and did, went to the Taymount Clinic and did um, an FMT, a fecal transplant. Um, had even more healing from that, was able to introduce chocolate and coffee. Yay! Um, <laughs> and sheep cheese. I mean, just some odd little foods. Suddenly I could eat them again. And it just felt like, okay, this is probably it for life. Um, and I felt okay. And then I had to take a course of antibiotics about two years ago and everything came back. I had all the symptoms of SIBO again and, um, definitely ran some more labs. H. pylori was off the charts. And so here I am, you know, I'm, I'm like, there's so much recurrence with all of these. And that's what I, I had read about. And that's what I lived with is, yeah, great healing. And I was, I was just hanging on. It's like, I can go the rest of my life not eating major food groups. So it was still corn, rice, gluten, dairy, nuts, seeds, including seed spices, none of those things. Um, it's okay. I'll manage it. And my life got continued to stay really small. And I do feel like even with all that healing, everything still kept getting shrinking down as I went through menopause, as my hormones changed, I developed more fears. I still even with some healing felt things still constricting and shrinking. And then I found you and that you work specifically with H pylori and you have great reviews from people and great success stories and, um, talk to you on the phone. You are so knowledgeable and so clear cut. And, um, yet at the same time you leave all this room for the mystery that 
that we're all dealing with, that I'm dealing with, I appreciated that you were still very open-minded, not like this is it and there's no other thing because I did find in all those years of going through my healing um, or my pursuit of healing, pursuit of understanding this mystery illness stuff, um, so many practitioners, so many bloggers and so many groups and ideas are so restricted in how, what they believe is happening. And I pursued these super narrow areas of healing that just ended, dead ended. They got so narrow, they ended and led to even more issues for me that really happened over and over. Maybe even with the FMT, that also is a pretty narrow one part of the elephant, you know, and um, even though I have healing with it, it's not everything. There's so much to the story. So I interviewed with you, it was almost a year ago, I think, Angela, and um, it was, it was, yeah, we're, it was about December, I think, December, January of last year. Um, and you mentioned Annie Hopper's um, DNRS. And it rang a little bell because I actually, you know, I founded the group Beyond AIP, um, which I think has like 7,000 people on Facebook right now. It's just a huge number of people for whom autoimmune paleo didn't work for them. Never able to reintroduce foods, kept getting worse. It just didn't work. Um, and that group now is um, led by Jessica. Oh my God, why have I forgotten Jess Flanagan? Um, yeah, and it's a lovely group. It's, it's really nice. And I believe in that group, people, somebody had said DNRS worked for me. And so it hung out there as, that's interesting. What I believed it to be in my head for some reason was that you would go and do some more neural healing. There's some neural connection to everything going on, nervous system, neural. And I, I already knew, you know, about the, um, the, um, I had read the book called, uh, sorry, I'm not going to remember. But anyway, it's how your bio, by your biography becomes your biology. So Nagasaka, I think, is the author of that book. Um, but already had this idea that things that happened in your past can actually affect your health today. And of course, my sister is a naturopath. She just kept saying, you know, this is connected to our childhood. And I'd be like, yeah, but I, I did a year of EMDR. I did a year of and psychotherapy along with that. I started to meditate. I, I did all of that before I flew to England because I'm like no stone unturned before I do this really drastic, expensive trip to Europe. And so I did all of that for a year. Everything I could think of, every lab, every everything anybody said. And I believed that I had hit sort of the neural retraining and healing on that area. And I mean, maybe it helped a little bit. I, it wasn't, I didn't, it wasn't perceptive for me if it did help. I just, it was subperceptive. Um, and I was, and I don't know specifically how any of it helped if it did, but so I kind of put DNRS off and da 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 da. But when you mentioned it, it just was the right time for me to look at something completely different, especially having recurrence of SIBO. And the new labs for SIBO were so different than five years ago, and I didn't know how to read the labs. And I thought, God, I need to go find another like SIBO practitioner to read my labs. I've got to start this all over again. I can't even get an appointment with Jason Horalek in Tasmania again, who I worked with, who helped me with SIBO the first time. I just, I couldn't do anything. And it was discouraging to find you and have to start another protocol having nothing to do with you. And so when you and I hung up the phone right there, I just pulled up my computer, pulled up DNRS and it was instantaneous resonated with me. And I started to read the success stories. Um, lots of people have just set up 
like a, you know, a URL to share their story. They don't blog, they're not active on it. They just want it out there because it's dramatic, the healing that a lot of people have through neural retraining. Um, and it was it for me. I am completely recovered. You can um, eat gluten again, which is very, very exciting. I can eat gluten again. I eat almost everything again. Um, dairy, dairy has been a little bit of a stickler, but I haven't done the, the, the retraining on it that I need to. So there is a whole process of reintroducing foods and talking to your brain about this is not a danger. This is, this is a, this is good for you. And um, this is a, and running the positive chemistry through my body and everything and then eating it. And, and also when you do it, you, it's not about the symptoms, it's the response to the symptoms. So there's a whole new way of reintroducing the food, not being afraid of it, not worrying about the symptoms, not, it's just, there's a whole rewiring. I mean, I absolutely am a completely different person. I rewired my brain around this. I, everything in life is different for me. Um, it's been astounding. And I now know I am perfectly clear for me, everything that was going on was a stress loop starting 15 years ago and vulnerable to it because of my childhood experiences that my limbic system is was on high alert because of what i experienced in childhood so going into adulthood it stayed on alert i hadn't done any healing around it. i had done a little bit but not a lot and i was vulnerable to experiences of stress that people who don't have a limbic system dysfunction would not be vulnerable to they'd be able to move through it and heal and instead it it locked me into a fight or flight loop subconscious that I have been in for 15 years and I'm in no longer in anymore. Yeah. And you didn't feel like you wouldn't say that you felt stressed, right? No. Oh my God. No. That's the thing that's really interesting is yeah. that people don't realize they're stressed. It's like fish not realizing they're in water. They've always been in water. They don't know what it's like to not be in water. And so if you're, this is, you've been operating with a nervous system like this for years, then it's such a good, it's a good analogy. I love that, Angela. That is absolutely what is, yes. I mean, since I was a little girl. Yeah. And so part of DNRS is to become aware of that. That's a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. Because what happens when you're in a limbic system stress loop, limbic system dysfunction, is that your thoughts and your behaviors get wired in with it. So it normalizes everything. You don't know how much I mean, we don't know how much we are complaining, how much we tend towards the negative, our negative bias is out of control because the limbic system's in control and it's not supposed to be in control. Our frontal lobe is supposed to be in control. So the whole rewiring is to actually take control of your limbic system and to talk to it. Like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore with a smile. We don't have to, we're rewiring and um, once the frontal lobe is in control and the limbic system has calmed down, it no longer recognizes all those foods as dangerous. I just got to eat them. I eat them. I digest them. There's no symptoms around it. Zero symptoms when I eat gluten. Zero. And my irritable bowel syndrome is gone. IBS is gone as well. Yeah. So I've healed even beyond those last 15 years. I healed into my childhood, deeply into my childhood as well. Oh, it's interesting that AMDR did not work but this worked. Well, I would say the reason it didn't work is because what DNRS does and other programs like DNRS, I don't know them because I only did DNRS. So for sure I am, but my comparison is I think EMDR absolutely has some similarities, but what we never, what we did is I sat in the psychotherapist's office and I talked, I brought up every single horrible experience we could find. We brought it forward and we concentrated on it. And what that does is it deepens those pathways in my brain. Oh, my brain yeah. and my limbic system were like, yep, that's why we live the way we live. Yep. And my limbic system loves that. 
because what the limbic system is trying to do is remember so we never have that danger happen again. So it, it dug that whole year. It was like, yeah, this is the best thing that could happen to me, but it doesn't lead towards healing. It kept all of those neural pathways. It dug them even deeper. Yeah. So yeah, with DNRS, you actually, um, stop talking about all of this. You do six months, sometimes more of, um, diverting away from all of those memories. And it's, it, it is a really interesting concept because a lot of people, the way that we're trained is you have to talk about them to release them, but that's not how the limbic system works. I'm doing neuro, I did neural retraining. I told my limbic system, you're confused. We don't have to remember those to heal. We actually need to rewire and they need to have less prominence in our life. That's the key. And you have to change it to another thought or visualization, right? I've never done DNRS, but from what I understand, right now I'm doing hypnotherapy training and working with the subconscious mind and so it's such a fascinating topic um you know so funny because when when i had ibs i was told it was in my head and i healed myself totally with physical stuff okay and i thought that's a cop out when doctors tell you it's in in, in your head and yet yeah. come around after this a decade of health coaching i come around to there is an element of it being in your head, but you know, in your head means in your body, in your limbic system, in your nervous system. Um, and from what I understand, the idea, you know, in, in hypnosis is when you revisit those scenes, you rewire them too. You change them, you change their meaning, you empower yourself. You just don't go, you don't have to go back there and express it and feel the pain you have to go back and make it mean something different something empowering something positive yeah so it's basically about i guess dnrs is about changing the narrative um it can be you can do that um, you can go back um for instance i went back deep into my childhood and i pulled up a photo my dad took of my sister and me skiing and I have always had this story that my dad wasn't around for us. And so instead I'm like, he took this beautiful photo. He delighted in us. He found us so funny and he took a skein. And it's, it's not, I didn't rewrite write it. I just went ahead and let the goodness bubble to the top that I have not allowed to happen in my life. Um, so there's some of that, Angela. But what I would say that is, I believe that is different and key is that that six months of all day in DNRS, you actually um, identify your triggers that they call POPs, pathways of the past. You identify your trigger throughout the day and you either say, we're not doing that anymore. We're, you know, um, um, I'm trying to come up with um, one of the triggers. Well, I mean, mm, 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 mm. it can be an emotion. It can be a thought. It's a behavior. It's something that we do. Um, yes, I'll go to dinner with you. So I'd say I'd go to dinner with somebody. We would get closer and I'd cancel because it's like, well, now I've got this migraine. I've got this blah, 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 blah. Those behaviors are keeping all the migraines going, even it's hard to talk about, but um, I'm trying to be clear. It's not that you have to go out with people when you have a migraine as you're doing DNRS, but it helps if you do. If you're like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to go out and I'm going to have dinner and I can do this. Even with a migraine, I can do this. I can move through this. I can expand into the world. I have the tools. I'm a whole person. I can go in and do this and have dinner and I can set boundaries around it and leave early. I can say, hey, I'm only here for a little bit, but I don't have to stop my whole life because of these things happening. Um, but you have to start to change those behaviors and those actions because they are deeply wired. And maybe hypnosis 
does that without even having to do the six months of work. I don't know. I haven't ever done that or other programs, you know, it could be the same thing. And, um, for me, like one of the biggest patterns of my past was setting boundaries. And apparently in DNRS, that's very common, not, not being able to say no, um, not being able to understand what my needs are, where other people end and I begin and all of those things. And I read an amazing book called Set Boundaries, Find Peace um, and started to set hard boundaries and understand them. And my confidence grew through all of that. And I would say key to all of my healing was setting boundaries, was saying no to people, with finding my own space and my own self. And so from that standpoint, that's mindfulness. You know, that's how you would, that was six months of being aware of why I'm doing what I'm doing, setting boundaries around it, changing why I do those things, in addition to an hour of this meditative process that you do with DNRS. Um, and it's not easy work. It's like, it is definitely like training for a marathon. It is training that I did, committed, I did it. Um, yeah, I stuck with it for over six months. I'm still doing some of it. So you have to, you have to, this is, yeah, like you said, it's a lifetime of patterns that you have to sort of remodel, <laughs> rewire, remodel. Yeah. yeah um, if what I love about your story is it just shows people that there's so many different paths. And a lot of people say to me, they email me and they say, I've tried everything, nothing nothing works. And then, you know, dot, 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 nothing is going to work is, is the, the, the subconscious thought that's driving like this hopelessness and this stress. Um, the thing about being sick and as you know, is, you know, maybe the stress got you there, but then, then you're stressed about being sick and it's like just such a vicious cycle. Um, so I just wanted to share your story to right. show that there are many, many different paths and options and you probably haven't tried it all <laughs> right <laughs> haven't uh, done this kind of rewiring there's there's you know dnrs there's you know the, the competitors gupta there's there's subconscious um there's hypnosis there's lots and lots of ways to just go in there become aware of your triggers empower yourself reframe them and then all of a sudden your body just calms down because at the end of the day, it feels safe. And then you, the nervous system doesn't feel like it has to protect you anymore. And then everything heals. It's exactly right. That if, if you are in constant fight or flight, yeah. your limbic system shuts down digestion, yeah. hormones, sexuality, all of that stuff, it all goes into dysfunction mode because it needs to be focusing on survival. Yeah. So I definitely experienced that through this and I couldn't agree with you more. There's also bloggers out there or bloggers, sorry, they blog, but there are coaches like yourself who are just doing similar retraining programs. You don't have to go with DNRS or Gupta or any of those, um, you can, if you like really one-on-one -on -one and working with somebody, just a quick Google, I found people also doing yeah. that. German New Medicine is also really popular and it's the same vein. It's kind of what you were telling me about DNRS reminds me of that a little bit too. So uh, this is becoming very popular now because it's very effective. <laughs> it is. Very effective. Um, so I just, I wanted to thank you so, so, so very much for your time. Yeah. And, um, and for sharing your story. And I'm sure it's going to help a ton of people. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm so happy that you are so broad in your practice. And yeah. I was looking at your blog earlier today. And already you're talking about neural rewiring and stress and this whole component yeah. that is, you know, not chasing symptoms, which I would just like to say, on Facebook, in those groups, chasing symptoms, I mean, it deepens that neural, those neural pathways. It, it can, for me, it, I very much believe it locked the illness in and made it worse. Yeah. But this whole new 
way of looking at the problem, you know, so it's interesting. Well, thank you so much for sharing your real life story. We know it works as it worked for you. And I'm sure it will work for other people who actually do it. This is the hard work though. <laughs> this is like what you said, like training for a marathon, but it's possible. And now you can eat gluten and now you have your life back and now you're, I sleep all night better than before. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, so Thank glad you I met so you. Much. Yeah, yeah. Have yeah. a great day. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Um,